Every year, there's a big-time five-star quarterback who is supposed to be the next generational talent, and the subject of today's video was the number one quarterback in his recruiting class and the projected future of Notre Dame football. His name was Gunnar Keel, and he was the best quarterback recruit in the class of 2012. Everyone thought he was going to be a future superstar and the next great Irish quarterback, and his career was filled with inconsistency, and he didn't even spend his whole career at Notre Dame. Today, we'll talk about the rise of Gunnar Keel, his whirlwind college career, and what he is doing now, and why he failed to live up to all the hype and the standards set for him. But first, be sure to give the video a like, subscribe if you love college football, suggest what player I should do next, and turn on post notifications. Now let's get started and talk about what happened to Gunnar Keel. Like we always do, let's go back in time and see how Keel became a big time prospect to begin with. Well, he was born and raised in Columbus, Indiana, and was a big time player from the very beginning. He came into high school as a 6'4 quarterback who was extremely athletic and had a cannon for an arm. He started to blow up as a recruit, and he was definitely a big-time talent, as he had offers from multiple Big Ten college football programs, but his home team and his brother had a big influence on where he would first end up. His uncle actually played at Notre Dame, his oldest brother played at Illinois State, and his other older brother played at Indiana. And since the Hoosiers were local, and Kevin Wilson was a big-time offensive mind, Keel felt at home in Bloomington and committed to Indiana. It was seen as the biggest recruiting win in Indiana football history, but it was pretty short-lived as Gunner was offered by basically every school in America and he would reopen his recruitment. He was wanted by a ton of SEC schools and he would later settle on LSU and commit to Les Miles. Finally, it seemed Gunner had settled in where he was supposed to be and he loved his trip to the bayou and woke up one morning and felt ready to commit there. This may have been Keel's biggest Achilles heel as he was never committed anywhere and he was always jumping around because he eventually decommitted from LSU and Les Miles had some not so kind words for him after he didn't show up to the first spring meeting. Three weeks later, Keel flipped to Notre Dame and had this to say. This recruitment process was a roller coaster ride at times, but I know I have made the right decision for my family and me. There were three critical elements that I was looking for in my future school. The quality of education I would receive, the distance from home, and the comfort level I would have with the players and the coaches in the football program. Notre Dame was the perfect fit for me because it hit all three of these areas. Very interesting take on his end, and Notre Dame landed a big name and big player, but people were concerned that he didn't understand the word commitment. I mean, we would have to wait and see what would happen. He was going to get a chance to play for the Irish, and he was the top guy in his class. According to 24-7 Sports, Gunnar Keel was a 5-star recruit, the number one pro-style quarterback, and the 26th best player in the class of 2012. Keel had finally made up his mind and was headed to South Bend to be the next great Notre Dame quarterback. Keel came into Notre Dame with a lot of hype, but he would have to beat out returning starter Tommy Reese and three-star sophomore Ivory Golson. Reese and Golson were the rejected guys in the quarterback battle, and one sports writer even said Keel would most likely run the scout team and eventually transfer. So I guess the guy who was supposed to be the future and the blue chipper was not even supposed to play. Turns out, he would never play a single snap at Notre Dame, as Everett Golson led the Irish into the title game and never looked back. Without ever playing, Keel was already on the move. He decided to set up the 2013 season and transfer to Cincinnati over the likes of Miami of Ohio and Ball State, proving he still wanted to stay local. As quickly as all his hype came, he was already in a new place that was a significant downgrade. Nothing against Cincinnati. He apparently loved the Bearcats' offensive staff, and he was going to get a real chance to play. He finally took the field in 2014, and actually looked like he was going to live up to all the hype he had coming out of high school. He threw for a FBS record 6 touchdown passes in his first game, 4 in his second game, and 4 more in a loss to Ohio State. He threw 3 picks in a loss to Miami, Florida, and the Bearcats were 2-3, and three, but then he led them on a huge winning streak. Despite battling an injury, he managed to lead the Bearcats to 8 straight wins, and they finished the year with a 9-3 record. Keel got injured in their bowl loss to Virginia Tech, but Tommy Tuberville and offensive coordinator Eddie Grant had Keel rolling and living up to all the hype. In his first year, he threw for 3,254 yards, 31 touchdowns, and 13 interceptions. He was just one touchdown and a few yards short of a ton of single-season Cincinnati records, but the head injury messed everything up. As a sophomore, he was very up and down and actually missed a few games. He had great performances where he threw for four touchdowns and a win over UCF and five and a loss to number 25 Houston, but he also threw four picks and a loss to a good Temple team and barely over 100 yards against Miami of Ohio. He would battle injuries all season long and even had a head injury so severe he'd have to go to the hospital. The Bearcats went 7-5, which included a huge win over the Miami Hurricanes, and they qualified for the Hawaii Bowl, where they were matched up at San Diego State. Sadly, Gunner did not play in that game because of personal reasons, and due to his absences from the field, backup Hayden Moore began to play well and challenged his starting spot. As a sophomore, Keel threw for 2,777 yards, 19 touchdowns, and 11 picks, and I'm surprised he did that well despite all those injuries. 
In 2016, Keel got some pretty bad news as he was named the third string quarterback behind Hayden Moore and freshman Ross Trail, and this was a huge blow to him. After Moore would get injured, Keel would start three games in his absence and even threw for nearly 400 yards and four touchdowns in one of those games, but when Moore came back, Keel went back to the bench. Gunnar Keel's five year career was now over, but he was impressive when he did actually play. He finished with 6,835 yards in his career, which was third best in school history, and his 56 touchdowns was also third best in school history. He was selected to the East-West Shrine game, but it was never likely he was going to be drafted or have any sort of professional career. So what went wrong for Gunnar Keel? Well, the first thing that happened was injuries. He was hurt on and off his two years at Cincy, and that messed with his play a lot, and he could never get into a rhythm, and it definitely messed up his mechanics. Secondly, his decision making was poor and he was always jumping around from school to school and he was the same way on the field. He was indecisive and didn't really know what was going on and seemingly was always a little bit out of control. Thirdly, he was so inconsistent as one game he looked like a star and throw four touchdowns and the next he'd play down to his competition and look bad. Fourthly, he never got to live up to the Notre Dame hype because he got stuck in a time where the Irish just so happened to already have two good quarterbacks on the roster in Tommy Reese and Everett Golson. This reminds me a lot of the Joe Burrow situation at Ohio State. Obviously, Joe Burrow was talented, but he was stuck behind Haskins and JT Barrett. Had he came to Notre Dame during the Ian Book era, I wonder if he would have challenged him. Finally, we will address why he was never a pro, and the answer is quite simple. It was his age and his durability. He looked like an old man by the time he left Cincinnati, and he had so many injuries during his career that he had already reached his potential, and there was honestly no reason for an NFL team to invest in him or really even give him a chance because he had already lived up to his ceiling. I also do think he was probably a tad bit overrated coming out of high school, as they looked more at his arm and numbers, and if they had looked at his decision making and some of his off the field stuff, maybe he would have been a little bit lower, but it was all just based on projections. Keel was a big deal in the Indianapolis area, and he was once seen as a future star, so it's crazy to see how his career played out, and he never even got a chance to even play any snaps or even try out for any NFL teams. It was a lot of fun researching this story and going through his career. I hope Gunnar Keel is doing well and his body is not too banged up. Just goes to show you that just because you're the top quarterback in your class does not mean you're going to be a star in college or that you'll even get a chance in the professional leagues. And we see this a lot more than you think. What do you guys think of today's video? If you're a Notre Dame or Cincinnati fan, please let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. And also let me know another player I should take a look at next. Before you go, be sure to give the video a like so it helps to get in the algorithm and my channel will grow. Subscribe if you haven't already. And check out my other video about another Indianapolis five-star recruit, Hunter Johnson. I hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.